17th day of April 2024. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. I'm Dana Dermfrit, and you can call in at 709-589-4406. I hope you're having a great day. In fact, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And consider clicking around a little tiny bit. I apologize, we're on YouTube and not much I can do about it. It's a pretty censored, controlled, monstrous you know, platform. Quite a few subjects you're not allowed to have a conversation about. And so while we can, we're going to talk about nuclear. I'm sure that'll be banned at some point. Am I already shadow banned? Because my numbers are... <coughs> they're completely disproportionate. Um, it's, it's an idiot too, but there are some good people on the internet still that are honest and sincere and genuine. And... Uh, these fake superheroes like the Hulk and Spider-Man, Superman, they were created by the nuclear industry to manipulate you and your loved ones and your children. And there's just a perpetual amount of these superheroes. So your grandparents can't be heroes no more. Your, your aunts and uncles can't be the hero of the kids because they don't wear a cape. And they diluted the word hero to the point now where it means it's nothing you got GoPro heroes, guitar heroes, and the real heroes are out there doing the dirty work. And this is where everybody in the nuclear industry should be sitting in that chair. Because in the old days, we got rid of our problems, and then they weren't the problem no more. <laughs> real simple math. You didn't need to be a genius. <clears throat> you got rid of your problem. Hey, there's two of us. It must be a movement. So we've got a news cycle for everybody tonight. Lots of bizarre news. Last night, uh, the show was an hour and four minutes. We had no views when the show was over, as usual. I had 30 thumbs up. You can see at the top there, 30 thumbs up. It was uh, 80 people according to YouTube. But when the show was over, we never had a single view. That's one of the ways they dilute my numbers. And so people look, ah, oh, you got no views. We're not watching that. But it's probably one of the better shows you'll ever come across. I'm not bragging or nothing. It's just because I've seen so much over a decade or so. And we don't see people out there sincere and genuine and honest and uh, if we did I would put links to them below my video Fukushima radiation unlikely to raise cancer rates this showed up uh, this morning despite the fact that this story is March 9, 2021 and so we might as well do that story or yesterday actually that story last night that showed up after the show uh <coughs> So what you're looking at, them, at what right there is, they're picking up one-ton bags of radiation. And so the back of it, you can see what looks like a terps or something. That's where they're collecting it. And they're going around picking it up. These are obviously nuclear scientists and, and, sign, and nuclear academics, nuclear physicists and quantum engineers, right? And it's the homeless and the destitute victims of society. And they've picked up over 30 million one-ton bags. And there was 150,000 sites like this here where they were storing it. And I don't have 150,000 pictures of the 150,000 sites. But we do have a lot of pictures of the bags. We've been showing it perpetually now for over a decade straight. A UN scientific panel on Tuesday confirmed a previous finding that radiation from 2011, now this was the 10th anniversary, Fukushima disaster in Japan was unlikely to raise cancer rates 
and said a jump in thyroid cancer in children was due to ultra-sensitive screening methods. Ultra-sensitive screening methods. <coughs> now, that country is incredibly radioactive. We know because they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. So the United Nations should be discharged immediately. They have no credibility whatsoever. And what they're doing is omnicide and genocide. And omnicide is where you're exterminating all the species. And so they have allowed this to happen. And uh, it said the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is part of the United Nations, on the anniversary of this year, went to Japan to pick up a $20 million check. Japan is their third biggest donor, and $20 million is just a drop in the bucket compared to what Japan donates each year. And he said Fukushima was the worst accident since Chernobyl, but it's the worst accident, period. The 1986 Soviet reactor explosion sent radioactive dust ra slash radioactive fallout. You can't call this stuff dust. It's radioactive fall, we call it what it is. A 9.0 magnitude quake and a tsunami crippled the Fukushima plant, and more than 160 residents had to leave as radiation spewed into the air. It was a half a million people left, and they just keep diluting the numbers and increments each year. After Chernobyl, people living close to the plant were exposed to radioactive iodine to the contaminated milk. And this is another one of the lies, because when you look up radioactive iodine, you see an eight-day half-life. And then you've got to really search to find out that there's ten half-lives, because most people think there's only eight days. But it's 80 days. And if you're getting radioactive iodine, you're getting everything else. The Japanese authority took more effective actions, including evacuation that significantly reduced exposures. This is simply not true. This is not even a little bit true. This is not even a good lie. This is complete fabrication. And so after the accident, they go around and they have all these homeless and destitute and victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language, picking up one ton bags of topsoil. They're scraping up the top two centimeters of topsoil. They only do it in 3% of the land. So the other 97%, whenever the wind blows or the rain washes, the radiation contaminates those areas immediately. Two days before the 10th anniversary of the disaster, United and we covered that sad, sad anniversary where United Nations showed up in almost every media you can imagine and said there is no adverse side effects whatsoever, not even the hair on your chinny chin chin. United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, the worst of the worst, unclear. They have IRPA, they have the IPRC, they have the International Atomic Energy Agency, and several more. And what they do is they're like a big group that pretends they don't know each other and then backs each other's fake uh, studies up, which comprises. Now, you know, they didn't go down and stand on top of these bags and say there's no adverse side effects, right? They didn't go down and and uh, write on these bags, Dana is wrong. And there's 30 million one-ton bags. They would still be there today. Writing. Which comprises 52 scientists from 27 countries published an update to the 2014 report based on data up to the end of 2019. The updated radiation dose estimates to the members of the public, you've either decreased or are comparable with the Scientific Committee's previous estimate, Unsclear said in a statement. But what Unsclear didn't say was that they didn't go here and make that announcement from the top of millions, and I mean millions of one-ton bags that they picked up. So if they go there and they stand on top of these bags and said there's no adverse side effects, there's not a human on the planet that's going to believe them, right? And they're the smart ones. The committee therefore continued to consider that the future health effects directly related to the radiation exposure are unlikely to be discernible. And there has, however, been an increase in thyroid cancers in children. Uh, they got a street there where seven people dropped dead in the first year. They had. 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. 
extra cancers. Try wrapping your mind around that statement, extra cancers. And that was the last uh, record they released was 2012 of the cancer increases in Japan. But cancer is not the only issue. There's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. And then your immune system is compromised. The effects are, by the way, are immediate. The thyroid, a gland in the neck that produces hormones, once it's radiated, it's producing radioactive hormones for the rest of their lives, is the most exposed organ. No, it's not. You know, in adults, 50 atoms a kilogram, and you can put 2 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. 50 atoms per kilogram will see permanent lesions to all of their organs, their, certainly their vital organs. And the pituitary, of course, is, is storing the radioactive hormones from the thyroid. As radioactive iodine concentrates, there's not just iodines that concentrates there, it's any gammas. Cesium-134, cesium-137, just being two of them. There's many, many, many gammas will also store in the thyroid, it's not just iodine. The whole story that you can take an iodine pill and mitigate it is meant to manipulate you in the sting in the harm's way when there is an event. If you live within 100 miles of a nuclear plant, you are irradiated all the time because the fuel pools are splitting atoms 24 hours a day. He studied using equivalent equipment in three prefectures. They said it's not exposed. Well, there's every prefecture in Japan is completely saturated. Some more than others, but they're all brutal numbers. So a study using equivalent equipment in three prefectures not exposed to radiation from Fukushima, but there is no place in Japan that's not exposed to heavy radioactive, perpetual radioactive fallout. The cancer rates, the 865,000 cancers, are symmetrical across the entire country, not just in Fukushima prefecture, the extra cancers. I, I think people like this, that there should be a special death penalty where you burn them at the stakes or something alive once they're convicted. Because hanging them is just a little bit too quick as far as I'm concerned. Found rates, this is what they're doing, coming out and saying there's no adverse effects. The evilness of it is unbelievable. It's, it's just inconceivable that somebody could be that heartless and that spineless and that soulless to utter a statement like that. They should be dealt in the most harshest way possible for their crimes against humanity. As high as those in Fukushima screening found rates of thyroid cyst and like, so like first off the thyroid in an adult is three by five centimeters. The thyroid in a kid is only around two centimeters. And one of the studies, and there's quite a few backed it up, was 13,646 children out of 38,000 had thyroid tumors of two centimeters. So for an adult, it's only the thyroid is three by five, which means that's a massive tumor. That's two thirds of the thyroid is a tumor. And the thyroid is producing hormones on top of that. So, and by the way, you know, if your thyroid and they are, have those particular attributes in the numbers that I'm talking about, it means that the children and the adults, but the children in particular, and animals and insects and birds and everything else, skeletons are producing radioactive stem cells. And when you, if you're a little tiny bit honest, you don't have to be wholly honest like I am, but just be a little bit honest. And if you're a little bit honest, then you quickly realize the United Nations is not going to go down and stand on top of these millions of one-ton bags and make the statements they're making. On the balance of the available evidence, the large increase in the number of thyroid cancers detected among exposed children is not the result of radiation expo exposure, unclear, which uh, Kathleen Higley, Geraldine Thomas, many of these ghouls, these actual ghouls, are members of. They're, they're vile, they're, they should be banned permanently everywhere, per, forever. We actually have a poll tonight asking the question, 
must the International Atomic Energy Agency be charged with omnicide for concealing Fukushima 4 reactors and eight nuclear fuel pools meltdowns? It's a simple, it's a simple equation. They're trying to harm you and your loved ones, and they have many ways to do it with radiation. And you should reply appropriately. Sitting in silence is not an option. You know, and, and it bugs me sometimes because I'll provide enough evidence that there's, you can convict them in court with it. And people will go into my comment section and say, is there any, is there any studies out there sh showing what I'm doing, what I'm showing? But it's not, it, of course it's not. They, everything is covered up. If it wasn't, if the studies were out there, I wouldn't have to do what I'm doing, right? If the United Nations went and stood on those bags and made them statements, then the United Nations wouldn't have any credibility anymore, would it? If the United Nations says rather that they are the result of thyroid tumors for children are the results of ultra-sensitive screening procedures that have revealed the prevalence of thyroid abnormalities in population that previously detected. <coughs> So when you when you suggest that it never Fukushima didn't happen, there's no radioactive fallout, and therefore there's no adverse side effects, you have lost your way. You're no longer acting as a human, and that your family, if you're convicted of these crimes against humanity and omnicides, should be the ones that are forced to execute you. See, here's a author is a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea. And last year, on July the 23rd, when this story came out, he said that all the melter reactors' discharges into the Pacific Ocean were equal to or the equivalent of throwing three grams of sugar into the Pacific Ocean. And in all honesty, I can barely contain my contempt for these people on a good day. That's um, we call, we affectionately known as Medusa, because just looking at it could kill you if you got close enough. To, say if you stood where those cars were, you're not walking away; you're dying there. It's the same thing attributes for Reactor Four, and for United Nations to come out and say that there is no adverse side effects. Period. Nothing. Um, I hate their guts. It's, literally the only words I can use without screaming when I open my mouth. So I show you all of these. These are pictures from, there's 150,000 pictures like this. But I'm going to take you to the other side of the spectrum because I can show you the reactors all day. I can show you the meltdowns. We're going to show you some stories, but uh, I'm playing around with software and I'm, because there's 150,000 pictures we don't have. I have thousands, but I don't have 150,000. So how do we really tell the story when we don't have, we, we know they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. And so uh, a lot of these pictures you're gonna see like this are pictures that I created to help articulate the missing story. Officials admit decontamination is only for reducing external exposures to radiation. We're aware the need to prevent the radiation in the food, but it's outside their jurisdiction. The official admits decontamination is for reducing external exposures in a nuclear wasteland. And how do you reduce internal exposures when there's 30 million one-ton bags picked up? Here's a story. Six in 10 Fukushima children tested have diabetes the head of the Tokyo Area Medical Clinic says we're expecting diabetes children from Fukushima radiation. But the nuclear trolls will come in and say you got no evidence. But we got endless evidence and we show it all the time. Tokyo newspaper. You can track it backwards and find it if you like. And these pictures are meant to tell the side of the story that we're never going to see because it's suppressed. But every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farmlands, for starters, and every nuclear power plant is hemorrhaging radiation into the environment, into the air from the fuel pools, which are splitting atoms. So the problem with nuclear waste is it's splitting atoms. So 
A reactor core boils water for a million homes and businesses. And it does just by splitting atoms. So you're talking about an absurd, an unbelievable amount of atoms just to boil a glass of water. And so to boil water for, for a million homes and businesses, it's an absurd. Once it goes through the chain reaction, now it can do that, right? But when you take it out of the reactor core, it's still splitting uh, atoms for a million homes and businesses, except it's now no longer in a containment. And it boils off, but each reactor has two fuel pools, and each fuel pool boils off about 120,000 liters each day. And there's about 1,000 plus fuel pools worldwide. So each fuel pool is releasing a catastrophic amount of radiation each day, 24 hours, every second of every day, up to tall, skinny stacks. 2012, this is one year later. 35.8% of the Fukushima children have thyroid tumors. 13,000, and they're tumors because the, the thyroid is only in children two centimeters. These tumors are two centimeters. 13,646 do at a, a 38,000. So pre Fukushima in Japan, the numbers were one to two per million. So when you scale it up, it's 358,000 out of a million. And instead of one or two per million, you're getting 13,646 at a 38,000. This is as catastrophic as it gets. But it goes further than that. It's hard to comprehend that every nuclear plant is surrounded by farms, and every farm they should stack, pick up the topsoil every year and store it in a repository. There should be no such thing as a farm. You should close down every nuclear power plant that is surrounded by farms immediately to preserve life. Congenital heart disease operations rose 14% after Fukushima per 100,000 live births. So congenital malformations per 100,000 across the entire country is around 14,200. Babies need open heart surgery when they're born if they survive. The numbers would be higher if all the babies survived. Uh, but abortions and deaths, spontaneous uh, deaths skyrocketed post-Fukushima. Like, and so, you know, you have all this evidence, and we show it all the time, and then people come in and on this video and will say, do you have any proof this happened? And I, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for these scumbags that do stuff like that. Because they're, they're trying to get the people that are first coming to the video to go away again, see, by saying, well, where's the evidence? But I provide it in every show. And I also provide the stuff that's missing. There's 150,000 pictures missing. There's 150,000 sites of one-ton bags. Highly radioactive glass rained on Tokyo at around 500 trillion atoms per kilogram. 500 trillion. Significant consequences for the human health, says scientists. It changes the understanding of the disaster and is extremely important. Our ideas of health implications should change. So, like, 185 atoms at a nuclear plant was normally you would abandon that area. So 500 trillion, you should have abandoned your country. Not maybe, because you you have contaminated the water and the air permanently. There's no going back from something like that. And the only people that work there are the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. Radiation and health specialists, children with 11 atoms per kilogram, and a Beckwell, a BQ, is considered a Beckwell. A Beckwell is a pulse of energy, and these pulses of energy from gammas and alphas and neutrons and betas are at almost each of them are almost the, the speed of light. 
And so they're all really close to the actual speed of light. They pulse that every second. That's called a back roll. And I've seen stories where people would say, well, you know, they, they found better, but don't worry, because it's, it's not the quickest uh, energy out there. So it's slightly slower than the speed of light. I, 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 you know, it's hard to wrap your mind around how you can be that evil. If you're educated enough to go to universities and get these degrees to get the jobs they got, which is on purpose to tell you to lie, you're educated enough to get a real job and make a lot more money. So what motivates these people to go for these particular jobs where their job is to lie to you is, is a question I don't think we can answer without splitting them open and, tr and examining their brains. Children with over 11 atoms per kilogram, you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. And J Japan has poisoned all the food worldwide and all the drinking water worldwide. We have destroyed the most important asset, the two most important assets we have, the water. All of it is contaminated with radioactive fallout for 80 years now, but Fukushima was a pulse event, and we contaminated the air. There's nowhere you can go on the planet with a Geiger counter that won't register, and all Geiger counters are shit. They're nowhere near the numbers that are actually present. You, uh, and the experts will tell you you got to multiply whatever's on your Geiger counter by 600. So it's hard to appreciate the enormity of each nuclear power plant, let alone Fukushima. It's For the average person, it just simply doesn't... Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 atoms a kilogram of cesium-137. Well, you don't need it in your food. It needs just to be outside your neighbor's house because cesium will pulse through your neighbor house and then through your house and radiate your children. If it's in their food, by the way, 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. How are you going to work out 50? And I can show you everything is contaminated with a lot, lot more than 50. Europe and North America all raised their limits many orders of magnitude post Fukushima. A complete betrayal. It's a complete betrayal. Over a million Japanese still living in areas with high daily radiation exposures. And it could take decades for illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries to manifest. Or it could take weeks, like a lot of Japan we've seen. Previous cesium, and so you hear these words cesium constantly, to the point now it's a trigger word for me. Limits in rice was 0.1 atom per kilogram. Now it's a thousand times higher. This is what all of our community, every community should look like this if we clean up the radiation from 80 years of emissions. That's what it would look like. Nuclear fallout will engulf Taiwan starting April the 6th. People should stay home or immediately take off their clothes. And what do you mean? When you read the story, they want you to throw it away. Throw your shoes away, throw your clothes away. And appropriately so, right? This is what the nuclear industry actually got done to us. Just because you can't see it and you can't smell it and you can't hear it or feel it or taste it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it or perceive it doesn't mean that it's not there destroying you and your loved ones and your family and your communities and the birds and the bees and the insects. It's an insidious, hateful, destructive industry. It can only exist with perpetual propaganda and lies. Radioactive rain caused 130 schools in South Korea to close. So you had Taiwan wanted everybody to stay home because and throw away the clothing. You had South Korea telling everybody to stay home and throw their clothing away. April the 4th in Taiwan, and then South Korea is on the other side of it. So a few days later, they're telling Korea to do the same thing on April 11th or 7th. Radiation data from Seattle area survey may be withheld. Every street in Japan should look like that. Every street. 
every street in North America should look like that. And like Japan only picked up 3% of Fukushima Prefecture. The food was banned in 14 prefectures by 55 countries for a decade. Radiation data from Seattle area survey may be withheld by the Fed for national security purposes. A helicopter flying over urban areas. You know, the rate just the xenon, not counting everything else, but when you got xenon or any other isotopes at these types of numbers, you know, there was you're looking at twenty million atoms of iodine one thirty one for every liter also. You're gonna have ten times more one thirty two in that same sample. You're gonna have thirty times more one thirty three in that same sample. You're gonna have thirty one times more iodine one twenty nine. And these studies showed up and quantified those assertions, by the way. There was 20 million atoms of C iodine-131 in that same area, and there was 220 million atoms of iodine-129 in that same area. And because you're getting, for every iodine-131, you got 10 times more 132 and 30 times more iodine-133. And they happen to ionize and radiate your thyroid glands and pituitary glands and organs nine times more effectively than the incredibly effective iodine-131. But for the xenon-133, you would have had similar amounts of krepton. Because they go hand in hand, right? And it would have been saturated with uranium, plutonium, and americium. And so you should have picked up billions of one-ton bags in America, too. In Seattle, you should have picked up billions over in South Korea. You should have picked up billions in Taiwan. It's a stupid, it's a stupid, hateful industry. It's a stupid industry that needs to go. Medical Journal article, 14,000 U.S. deaths after Fukushima fallout. That, that study was revised to 20,000 a few weeks later when they got the numbers. 5,500 miles away. Because that's how radioactive fallout actually works. Heart attacks are the norm. Myocarditis is the norm. Congenital malformation, diseases and illnesses, not immune deficiencies and injuries are the norm. And every street in Japan should look like this. Every street. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags. What do you think that really means? At 3% of, of the country, or Fukushima Prefecture, rather. Almost the entire city of 300,000 people had radiation levels high enough to get decontaminated by the government. Well, you can't decontaminate the people or the houses. You're supposed to abandon them permanently and immediately before it even shows up. See, everybody should be dressed like that on the entire planet, going around picking up all the topsoil to try to mitigate some of the radiation so that the future species and humans might have a chance to survive. And if you think I'm kidding, you're sorely mistaken. New York Times, we have Fukushima polluting the entire Pacific Ocean. Well, see, again, that statement doesn't do it justice. Let me explain that to you. And we're talking about how people should be dressed. This is a model of a million to 10 million atom per cubic meter of air by France. And the model is based on 31 days after the tsunami, which is right now you're at 21 days, which is 15 days after the last reactor blew up. The whole planet is already perpetually covered in radioactive fallout. And that plume never stops. That, that's a continuous plume covering the entire planet. That's forever, ever. So what you're talking about there is full body x-rays for all the birds, all the insects, all the bacteria, all the fungus in your forest. And so now your forest doesn't suck up water anymore because you, because you destroyed the ecosystem itself. And so now water just runs off the force instead of soaking up. And now you have these massive flash floods. And because you kill the bacteria and the fungus and the biota in the force, it doesn't break down the foliage or the litter anymore. So you would postulate you're going to see major flash floods post-Fukushima. 
and you would also postulate you would expect to see massive forest fires as two of very emblematic things that would happen after an event like this. Because the foliage and the litter doesn't break down, because the ground on top of that has no biota anymore. It doesn't have the fungus, the bacteria. You can't have plants and trees without fungus and bacteria. Yeah, they can survive, but they're not going to be able to do the things that they're supposed to do, right? They're going to be very poorly performing. And the whole ecosystem works together to enhance each other synergistically, right? It's one big happy community, so to speak. And so when you get lightning strikes in these dry forests, this foliage and litter that didn't break down is not supposed to exist, but does wafers up in the air because of the heat and the energy and it lands a thousand feet away and so now these forest fires are jumping because you have these huge amounts that the biota didn't break down because you you wiped out the community so when you have a uh, rain the normal rain it doesn't soak up into the ground instead it it runs on the surface because it's so dry it's really something we were looking for spiders a couple, two years ago, and they took down my other YouTube channel with 25,000 subscribers. And I was there, because normally you check the spider webs, right, for birds or for insects in each area to see what kind of species you, you know, you're going to find in that area. And we couldn't find, there should be about a half a million spiders uh, per acre. We're talking peak summer on top of that, and there's no spider webs. And I ran across another uh, academic from Nova Scotia, and he was on vacation. And he, I had uh, my underwater drone. I was about to put it in a river. And fisheries and oceans, I came by the day before and told me there's nothing came up the river because they have the, la the so-called ladders, right? But I was going to put the drone in the water, and this uh, bunch of quads and side-by-sides showed up. And one of them was an academic, and they were studying the spiders too in Nova Scotia, the spiders were completely missing. And he was showing me pictures of his team, there was 13 of them. And the spiders, they were finding them on the hemlock trees. But he said the interesting thing about it was that spiders never ever lived on the hemlock trees before. And that's why, that's why they were doing the study. But he said what we discovered was they weren't anywhere else. This is where we found them. <coughs> and, uh, Anyway, uh, I, I put a video out that night about that, telling that story. The next morning I was going to do an update, and YouTube took down my site with 25,000 subscribers. And with, I had 1,600 presentations on that site like you've seen tonight, and a lot of footage from my research expeditions where I'd done six years, five to six months each year on the ocean doing species counts, all wiped out by heartless and soulless and spineless and idiot pro-nuclear community. Every street in Japan, every street in America, every street in Canada should look like that right there. Leading director in Japan, nuclear power generation is the only invention that may destroy the future of human beings. Yes, because the radiation fallout is perpetual. You got 80 years, you got every nuclear power plant its fuel pools are all splitting atoms into the ecosystem. And every nuclear power plant, except for a few, are surrounded by farms. It's, it's the stupidest thing imaginable unless you're trying to exterminate everything. Major U.S. paper, it's time to quit the nuclear power altogether, threatens the very existence of human civilization as we know it. Must the International Atomic Energy Agency be charged with Omnicide for concealing Fukushima's four nuclear reactor meltdowns and eight fuel pools. Each fuel pool got four decades of reactor cores. And that's what makes the fuel pools so monstrous in nuclear plants. Is As the plant is older, you're putting more fuel in the pools, which means you're producing more atoms every year and releasing them into the ecosystem. Every, these are more lethal every year into your communities and into your eco and biosphere. How can the world be sitting in silence with a machine like that? This is a genocide machine, an omnicide machine. And me 
Niko Kaku, a famous physicist from the United States, human civilization may destroy itself. I mean, look at Fukushima. Liquefaction of three nuclear reactor cores. Well, reactor three didn't liquefy. Reactor three went up about two kilometers with the fuel pool, right? Reactor two might have liquefied. Reactor one might have liquefied. But they burnt constantly for days. But reactor three and four, let me remind you, they went kapooey, right? There's reactor three. The fuel pools were at the top of the building. There's no top. And so the fuel pools are at the very top. This is reactor four. So there, there is no fuel pool. And, and they say they got the fuel out of that pool. But how can you do that when it doesn't exist? And, and because that the industry and the United Nations have perpetrated this hideous, and your, what your media done was just stunning. I got a depiction that I show all the time of the media saying they're in reactor four fuel pool. This will probably be the night I can't find it. Here we go. And uh, I created this like 10 years ago. I put this video together. I'm not going to play it tonight. But here's your biggest media is, you know, from United Ca from Australia, ABC, Cecilia Vega, BBC, uh, which is the biggest in basically Europe, uh, Rupert Winfield Hayes, and CBS, Seth Thorne is the biggest in the United States. And CNN, of course, the worst of the worst. Really hateful. It's a very hateful media. They're all pretending that they're in a fuel pool 120 feet above the stump to your left. Nobel Prize winner on NHK. The only way to preserve a human life is to completely turn away from nuclear power. Yeah, for starters, because there's many reasons, by the way. It's not just one. There's many reasons. That's the the frightening facet of this story. But the, the most important one is they're surrounded by farms and the fuel pools are flooding the farms with isotopes 24 hours a day, every day. It's so incomprehensible. It's so evil. I can understand people having a hard time uh, wrapping their mind around because you're never going to hear this story anywhere else. There's nowhere else on the planet someone's going to tell you this story. That's, that's the scariest thing to me of, of everything, is that if I'm not here, then no one's going to tell the story. Nobody's ever had an anti-nuclear show where they provided all the documentation in history. So you can see why they hate me, because they can't look in the mirror when they come to my show anymore. The only way to preserve human life is to completely turn away from nuclear disease factories. We call them nuclear disease factories because clearly these are disease factories. And every building and every street in Canada, United States, and Japan should look like that right there. We may not be able to live in Japan someday. Radiation is going to be flowing out for a long period of time. It never stops, though, right? And it radiates everything. So it radiates the flowers. The flowers are producing radioactive hormones. Or <laughs> radioactive hormones. Radioactive pollen. Forever. TEPCO, send us people who don't mind dying. Clearly, they're not talking about nuclear scientists. Clearly, they're not talking about academics. Clearly, they're talking about the most vulnerable of society. Clearly, this industry has no right to exist. And I'm showing you the, I created these particular pictures because Fukushima contaminated soil. There are currently 105,000 storage sites in 2019. But let's go back, I think it's 2016. And in 2016, I'll show you the story. You can go back to this story. Yeah, 2016. There was 30 million one-ton bags, and, and it was also 150,000 sites. Uh, like that. Look at this statement here. 60 and older should be prepared to die at your power nuclear power plant if it breaks down. 60 and older should be prepared. Like, it blows my mind that that statement was ever made. 60 and older... As if, you know, they've worked all their lives, right? 
you know, we should throw away every nuclear scientist first and their loved ones. Let's get rid of them first. Let's get rid of that friggin' gene pool. Because, I mean, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? They're getting rid of yours. Tokyo Vice Governor suggests as a Fukushima draft, all of Japan must face it. But this is a power plant that broke down. Why should why should everybody be sacrificed when a power plant breaks down when you don't need it? Why not use geothermal? Why were we looking at nuclear? It's time to make a geezer suicide squad. But think about the contempt to portray the victims that they're going to create as geezers, as, as suicide squads. Send the grunts in there, the, the, mil the ones who join the military, the, the folder for the cannons. But first, let's send all the nuclear scientists and their children and nuclear students and nuclear professors in first, right? Let's get rid of them. They're a terrible gene pool that should be wiped off the planet so that we can have insects and birds and fish in the future, right? Japanese discussed personal health problems and strange deaths. Seven people died on a single shopping street in one year. Have, do, do you have a shopping street in your community where seven people died in one year? Does anybody out there have that attribute? <laughs> Can anybody tell me that story? Call in at 709. Oh, that's the wrong one. Call in at 709-589-4406 if you've got a street in your town, city, or community where seven people drop dead in one year. I want to I want to hear it. I, I need to hear that. Because I know you didn't, right? 709-589-4406. If you're pro-nuclear, call in and tell us why nuclear is so great. Give us a call. Come on, I'm waiting for you. I'm going to have some tea. I'm going to go slurpee. Oh, it's too cold now. How come seven people died on the shopping street in Fukushima Prefecture in the first year? It's insane, right? By the way, we still got a poll going, don't we? Must the International Atomic Energy Agency be charged with omnicide, which is an extermination of all species, for concealing Fukushima's four reactors and eight nuclear fuel pools meltdowns? Somebody accidentally voted no, but it has to be an accident. There's no way anybody's going to vote no on purpose. My goodness. I'm only being honest. Top 20 U.S. newspaper. The world's food chain could be compromised. Japan's radiation seems inescapable. It's not seeming inescapable. It is inescapable. The story is so terrifying. But then, you know, that nothing we can do about it is ter the, the terrifying part. But we still got to deal with it. Pretending it didn't happen is the worst thing you can do. Not confronting this evil is the worst case scenario. And I'm just not going to sit there in silence. I, I just can't do that. Neptunium-239 dispersion. This is only based on 20 days of radioactive fallout, for goodness sakes. This decays to plutonium-239. Thirty million one-ton bags from a single meltdown, which was only three percent of the land that they scratched up the surface. It defies any rationale, and the majority of the planet has no concept. Columnists, the truth must be told: Fukushima is a major global threat to all living flora and fauna, and that the mainstream media is not the best source. Gunderson should be charged with crimes against humanity for telling people that Fukushima didn't melt down, the fuel pools were intact. It's unbelievable what that person done, the damage that person has done to humanity. It's inconceivable. So even if you got a pretty woman in a bikini, it's still 
doesn't make it okay, okay? Focus on the future. This is a story from yesterday. Futaba project, which is right jumping down to the nuclear plant, aims to rebuild the dreams and repopulate the nuclear wasteland. 311, exploring Fukushima. This part, this feature is part of an original Milwaukee independent editorial series that documented the 13th anniversary, including the conditions of both the people and places that remain affected by the disaster across the Tohoku region. And they have failed miserably at their job. More than a decade after the devastating event of 311, 311, March 11, 2011, Futaba is cautiously taking steps towards rejuvenation. You can't rejuvenate a nuclear wasteland, and within sight of it is the nuclear meltdowns. In Futaba, they have 14 million one-ton bags stored there on top of that. But it shows you the absolute contempt this industry has, the unmitigated evil that it's capable of, and the soulless heartlessness of the people that are orchestrating it. You literally got to be without a soul to promote Fukushima or nuclear. You literally, like if you're, if you're in a position to do that, then that means you're in a position to know what I'm, I'm um, talking about. And so how can you just, it'd be the equivalent of me taking a job and promoting nuclear. It'd be unconscionable, right? You know, even if I was a zombie, I, I know I still couldn't promote nuclear. If there was a zombie in the apocalypse, and somebody asked me about nuclear, and if I told them it was good, then I could go into a bunker and I would have all kinds of help, I still couldn't do it. It's just a, every facet of this industry is the worst nightmare humanity has ever come across. So my ancestors are looted here for just, so they find somebody that's a complete moron, just a useful idiot, and they put them on a pedestal and they, they regurgitate whatever that person who knows nothing says, as long as pro-stupid. I just, I can't even comprehend how evil you got to be. And we see, we see this so many times over so long now, but that's the game, is they'll go find somebody who's complacent or just stupid bless their hearts, and they move back into the nuclear wasteland, and then they'll go there and they'll use their words, or they'll just not even, they'll make up a person and they'll make up the words. And that's what a journalist does for a living. A journalist's job is to destroy your future. A journalist's job is to cut your throat. A journalist's job is to make sure your children get sick and die. A journalist's job is to hate your guts. That's the journalist's job. There's, this is not up for debate. We got overwhelming evidence now that we've this is what we generally cover we cover the media's lies each day we do a 24-hour news cycle most of the time and we only talk about lies and every journalist that talks about nuclear is going to stab you in the back without exceptions every single one so what does that tell teach us you know the first couple of years ah, we're just going to the wrong places the next couple of years ah, it'll get better 22 years later, it is just evil. They're just evil, let's face it. They're just degenerate cowards that hide behind a type writer. I can't even comprehend how they can write a whole article and suggest since the ban was lifted years ago for parts of Futabar, so you're talking about a nuclear wasteland, where they have this little section they're considered is okay. Well, it can't be. It doesn't work. Nuclear doesn't work that way. And you, they got people moved in there. And so they, when they go there, they can't stop anywhere. They got to drive right to their home. And then they have to go indoors and stay indoors. And there's people that are so complacent, they'll do that. They're so freaking stupid, they'll actually do it. Or have been impoverished because of the anguish. And then they pretend that they have they put them on a, in the media and they get their picture taken and that's the highlight of their lives. And the Futa Bar, this is the Futa Bar Museum where they um, they spent fifty million dollars 
this is what's inside of nuclear meltdowns, by the way. It has been a go. It really is a ghost town for the last thirteen years. And uh, they built a museum there. And so when they talk about the statistics for the community, that's the people that were complacent and end up going to that museum. That's counted as a statistic. They don't say they, you know, so many people went to Futaba to visit the museum. They'll say this many people visit Futaba. Uh, the dishonesty in this industry is 100%. It's 100%. It's 100% hate. That's what we see with this industry. McMaster Engineering welcomes nuclear engineer Marcus Pyro to the faculty. There he is. Ho, ho. Hello, everybody. I'm Marcus. Ho, ho. He's serving as an asshole professor, bringing with him many years of being a nuclear energy asshole in academics and industry. Mr. Asshole himself, resume, landed in the hands of a friend's mother who worked in the National Defense, and then he took that job. Found himself studying nuclear engineering in a PhD program at the Royal Military College. The Royal Military College. <laughs> Why would you call it royal, first off? All, uh, what a military does is it kills things. Everything, everything is a nail, and the military only has a hammer, right? Uh, so let me get this straight. There was uh, 19,000 rapes. What was the numbers? 19,000 rapes a day in the U.S. military? If they're raping their own that many, how many are raping in the countries they're occupying? That's how they create resistance, right? And more, they go and rape all the women and children, and their loved ones that they didn't kill will be outraged, and that's called resistance. The military is literally the stupidest thing you can get your hands into. And people, you know, good-natured people will join it for the better, and then they're sucked in. You can't quit, you know. How can you join something that you can't quit? When did that become a good idea for people? After completing his Ph.D., Arsehole went on to do postdoctoral fellowship at Oak Ridge National Laboratory which is built over one of the biggest aquifers in that part of the country, right? Snake River Aquifer, which is big as the Great Lakes, for goodness sakes. And it's built right over it. They spent over $50 million trying to clean up the waste that is, is being washed down into the aquifer for, since the 1950s. You can't clean up something that's been going on since the 1950s. Before finding his way back to Canada's the section head of fuel modeling and fission product transport to Canadian nuclear laboratories, Chalk River National Laboratories. <laughs> so a total demon, right? Chalk River had two nuclear meltdowns, for goodness sakes. They're going to put a million tons in the surface of nuclear waste. They said this is transuranic waste, but we all know better. It's, the whole story is absurd, right? You know, oh no, they got a million. No, Dana's transuranic waste. Oh, I'm sure they got a million tons of shovels and mops, you know. And his four year stink in the role wrapped to where he joined the Ontario Tech University, served as an associated arsehole, Canadian research chair in nuclear fuel and materials, and founding chair of the Energy Nuclear Energy Department. And now having John McMaster Engineering. Our soul professor says he's looking forward to continuing his research and inspiring future mass murderers to pursue nuclear education. That's what a nuclear student is, right? He's a future mass genocide machine. We'll focus on nuclear fuel chemistry. Why would you bother with nuclear when geothermal exists? Why would you want that legacy attached to yourself? They're such dishonest people, aren't they? They make a huge amount of money, so that they can make it anywhere else too, but they won't. Too stupid to go somewhere else. Of enhancing fuel performance, maintaining safety, both conventional and merging nuclear technologies, such as small modular reactors. What are you talking about? You don't even have an application into the regulatory agencies. If you took these same people and put them to work on geothermal, you wouldn't need to add gas, oil, or coal, or nuclear, would you? The revolting parasites. And one of the benefits of conducting his research, he says, the opportunity to molest the students. 
A Chalk River National Laboratory we recently launched the Chalk River National Laboratory Nuclear Undergraduate Research Experience Program in collaboration with McMaster's University and Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. First off, Chalk River National Laboratory is run by Americans. It's run by Bechtel and Jacobs, right? And Pyro is responsible for supervising the victims slash students. And if you're one of his students, if you're one of his students, you're a victim. Look at it. He said, I'm looking forward to playing a pivotal role in preparing Mac engineering students to be the next generation of leaders in nuclear engineering, making them ready for the real world of working in this industry. So you got to desensitize them. That's basically. Some of them will go off to create stuff that will murder you in the hospitals. He said, like, don't tell the world you're a Canadian. Don't burden Canadian with your fuck-ups, buddy. McMaster being Canada's nuclear university, this is a natural place for him to be in the university. Because that heart, he's just a big, stupid kid, right? He's a worthless human is what he really is, though, isn't he? If you work in the nuclear industry, you're a worthless sack of shit. You really are. You're a pathetic fucking person. You're dysfunctional if you work in the nuclear industry. That's the only reason you get the job there in the first place. Our nuclear facilities at McMaster are one of the leading producers of medical isotopes that are used to diagnose and treat people with cancer. You can't treat people with radiation. Shit for brains. I hate these weasels, and we see so many of them over so many years. And, of course, McMaster has an endless supply of these useful idiots for the nuclear industry. Is Europe unprepared for a nuclear catastrophe as Zapophoria in Ukraine? We, like we, first off, your paper suits ain't going to protect you from the gamma shines, the X-rays, the beta rays, the gamma, the neutron bombardments. Some have warned of a nuclear disaster similar to Chernobyl. These are different reactors, by the way, right? They're, they're way closer to Fukushima than they are to Chernobyl reactors, which was the graphite reactors. Zapophoria was pure uranium plutonium. And so they, they love doing that where they don't want to mention Fukushima, they'll talk about Chernobyl. Chernobyl was brutal, don't get me wrong. Chernobyl's anniversary is coming right at us, isn't it? Next month. Or is it this month, April 28th, 26th? Yes, yeah, this month, isn't it? Oh, God. Now, i done a video on Chernobyl about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. And I can't remember how many studies. I had hundreds and hundreds of studies. I'm showing you the different things that they study after a nuclear accident. And that's where, if you're not too familiar with nuclear and you're starting to be, you need to see that video because that gives you all the different perspectives of the things they're studying. And then you can say, well, they actually know everything about nuclear because they're studying all of this stuff. They're not studying that stuff because they got money to throw away. They're studying it because they, it's an insidious, unbelievable, monstrous element, right? And, you know, it's man-made, right? We call it man-made because it's not produced by the sun. It's not dust, stardust. However, former International Atomic Energy Agency Chief Nuclear Inspector Robert E. Kelly tells Euronews that there's no possibility such attack could cause the plant to explode. Yeah, well, if you disconnect the external powers... If you connect, you disconnect the power to the fuel pools, they'll melt down, for instance. If you disconnect the power to a running reactor, it'll melt down. If you compromise the fuel pool, it'll melt down. Once, this, once the fuel rods are exposed, there ain't no human get within thousands of feet of it. It's a lethal dose. And uh, zirconium cladding now will ignite. It'll burn at around 1,800 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And that'll ignite the plutonium uranium pellets inside, and they'll burn at around 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And that will literally just, it'll cause a steam explosion. The water will evaporate so quick, it's the animosity equivalent of a bomb going off. And uh, these, these, every facet, every time you talk, any from International Atomic Energy Agency or United Nations or anything from McMaster's University or Chalk Rivers National Laboratory, these are scumbags. 
They get the job because they're scumbags. Let's not fool around. Let's not pretend that's not true because you know that's true. They're scumbags, right? And taking iodine tablets ain't going to help you lick. It's going to do nothing for you. First off, you've got to take it around 72 hours before you have an accident. Second off, isn't just because it didn't go in your thyroid, let's say it did work and it didn't go in your thyroid, it sequestered your muscles, your organs, and your bones anyway. You're still a done duck. Your body now is under siege from white blood cells for the rest of your life on top of that which means you're not producing red blood cells, which carry oxygen and nutrition. But which also means now you compromise your immune system, so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. <coughs> yeah, let me keep going here. Aboard France's aging nuclear submarines, old boats but new missions. Old boats but new missions. First off, you can't use the nuclear weapon. What's the point of it? And nobody can cash their checks ever again. What's the point of it, sir? Not only that, then you, you can't just keep robbing the taxpayers because the taxpayers ain't cashing their checks no more. The whole... The whole uh, Rip-off system breaks down if you have a nuclear war. And But the money that, like, for every day on the ocean needs four days uh, in the in the shipyard. And then the amount of money we're talking about for, for maintenance on a nuclear submarine for each day is stunning. It's the best way to rob your country of all its precious resources, too. Once again, the ocean beckons for France's veteran nuclear-powered attack submarines. They can't attack anybody. What are you talking about? Name a single time a French submarine attacked somebody. Yeah, they, they attacked you and the animals and the bees and, and the fresh water and everything with the radioactive fallout. You know, what France done to the French Polynesians is simply uncalled for. It was equal to a Nagasaki bomb every day, every week for 12 years of radioactive fallout. And the babies there, they call them jelly babies because they don't have arms or legs and they're like little lumps of jelly and they die right away. So anyway, they have this picture, right? So I goes to watch the video and you know how bad the scumbag media is. Instead of watching that video, they Iran attacks Israel video. So they can artificially inflate the numbers of that with their narratives, right? Really despicable scum stuff. What we expect, right? So Israel now is talking about attacking Iran's nuclear plants that are running. Think about that statement. Attacking Iran's nuclear plants. <coughs> Let's see here. It's an efficient machine to destroy nuclear waste. Nuclear future powered by thorium beckons. This is a slippery slope where we're talking about the thoriums, right? They looked at that a long time ago. Bear with me here. Am I streaming okay? Yeah, it looks okay. Looks perfect, actually. I just thought I saw something that I didn't, I guess. <coughs> Hang on here. Uh, so here's the story on thorium. Let me see. We'll get to it here in a second. So they say it doesn't 
produce long-lived radioactive waste, which is a loy, and with the potential for use in chemical weapons, which is another loy. According, see, they use these words to mitigate the loys they told in case they're called upon it. To developers beyond the new thorium reactor technologies, only 5% of the fuel material in the conventional reactor, it's actually about 3%, can participate in productive nuclear reaction with the remaining 95% instead of forming hazardous, long-lived transuranic products. So the, the 238 captures the neutrons, right? And it becomes uranium-239, which converts to plutonium-239, which is like 25 minutes or something, is it? Which captures new neutrons to, so you have 240, 241, which converts into americium, but 241 doesn't go to americium for 460 years or something, is it? 240 converts in about, I can't remember, like 20 minutes or something. But 241, and we got plumes of that, right? Convert takes 460 years or something before it decays to a different isotope. Which means it's four thousand years, or four hundred years, or four thousand years, four thousand six hundred years before it disappears. It becomes two thirty nine, which converts into plutonium two thirty nine, which captures neutrons. So you have two forty two forty one, which converts into americium. But two forty is right away that within a half an hour. But two forty one takes four hundred sixty years. It's a very active waste. So the thor thorium was going to use 233, which decays to 233 uranium, I believe, right? So bear with me. Let me see if I get this right. So yeah, thorium 232 becomes thorium 233, rather, which then by way of beta decay becomes protactinium 233, which is... It's a very short half-life, right? Protactinium-233. But, you know, it's not that short. It's a few days. And this product is radioactive. It becomes uranium-233, which is radioactive for a quarter million years or something. So the unnatural uranium-233 is fissionable and almost as all the thorium is converted to uranium-233. So they use thorium-232 to end up with uranium-233 because it captures a neutron. The nuclear reaction does not produce any potent long-lived transuranic product. Like, what are you talking about? Uranium-233 is a long-lived isotope. Just lying becomes so natural, doesn't it? Imperial College. The crazies themselves. And Geraldine Thomas is at the... Uh, Geraldine Thomas is... Uh, we cover her a lot. She's an unbelievably despicable monster who, for a hobby, murders children with radiation in hospitals. That tells you all you ever need to know. Imperial College nuclear reactor becomes the first UK site to be completely decommissioned. Because uh, Imperial College had a small nuclear, uh, very, uh, uh, what they call a test reactor, right? Where they do a little basic stuff for students. Its land is now safe to use for other purposes. Now, I, I don't understand how that could be possible. Once it's radioactive, it's always radioactive. The Imperial College Reactor Center in Ascot has become the first reactor set to be fully decommissioned under modern rules, which means you can leave all kinds of waste behind in UK nuclear history, and only the third UK Reactors said to be have completed this process. Its land is now safe to use for other purposes, which is simply not true. It's safe to their rules, according to their rules, but it's not safe. Parts of Imperial College London, ICRC, was opened in Silverwood Park in 65. as one of the only four university reactors in the country. And these are kilowatt reactors, but they're still, the fuel is still splitting atoms into the ecosystem. And these reactors don't have no containment. These are open reactors. These are like the old Chernobyl reactors, right? It's such a disgusting industry. When it closed in 2012, it was the UK's last civilian research reactor. That's where Geraldine Thomas is from. 
the, the despicable Dr. Geraldine Thomas. The universities use the reactor mainly for teaching purposes, but also for research in many fields of neutron reactor physics. And when the reactor was last used in 2010, it also become commercially used, including producing radioisotopes and calibrating radiological instruments. Producing radioisotopes to murder your loved ones in the hospital with, was more like it. And Trevor Chambers, John at Imperial, is head of the reactor center for the UK Atomic Energy Authority. You can imagine what kind of weasel that one actually is. To put together the complex, complex decommissioning plan, which took seven years and was overseen by the Office for the Nuclear... This is only a little tiny test reactor, what they call a university reactor, but they're real reactors. It took them seven years, seven years. Fukushima had four meltdowns and eight fuel pools detonate. Oh, they could do it in about 30 years, Dana. The fr this one didn't melt down, the word time, right? The first stage involved removing 31 fuel rods, which are splitting atoms forever, and four control rods, along with intermediate level waste, and transporting it all to the Silla field in Columbia, the nuclear wasteland of wastelands in Europe, for storage and reprocessing. The evilest of evil to do with nuclear is to reprocess it. You're literally a degenerate scum if you're promoting reprocessing. You're literally the, the, the scourge of humanity if you're promoting reprocessing. You use, you're, you're a vile idiot. Just another useful idiot. We had to build and design a lot of the equipment from scratch. So they built a reactor, didn't know how to decommission it. This is a story of evil. To safely remove the fuel rods, a lousy 31 fuel rods. And they had to build their own whole bloody take. Took them seven years to remove 31. 31 friggin' little small fuel rods. 31. We should all hang our head in shame that these people are allowed to walk among us. Once all the rods were safely inside the transport flash, it was wheeled into the building, lifted onto the secure transport vehicle by a mobile crane before it was taken to the cellar field, which is surrounded by farms, has contaminated all of the Antarctic. Until the water was drained out, we were essentially producing another reactor within the transport flash, so we had to show the ONR that there was no danger of transport flash going critical. They contaminated everything doing it, I can guarantee you. The building that housed the reactor needed to be radiologically and chemically cleaned. Well, you can't clean these things. You can only take them apart and move them somewhere else. You can't clean them without contaminating the entire environment. Before it was knocked down, debris transported. So when you use the word knocked down, this means you contaminated a huge area forever and transported to low-level waste sites. Like, what are they? They don't actually have low level waste sites in the United Kingdom. Final cleanup included testing the soil samples for a range of radionuclides using gamma spectrometry. Well, what, what about alphas? What about betas? What about neutrons? What about x rays? And he claimed that all soil samples at the degenerate Imperial College is now have radiations at normal background levels. It's impossible post Fukushima to have anything normal. The Pacific site of the reactor center site is being developed as an open space for leisure use by staff and students. As a leisure use. Oh, really? You're not going to turn it into a uh, professor's uh, cafeteria or nothing? That's interesting. The dean should shut up his office down there. I bet you'll tear down that part of the building right away. Final touch is being put on nuclear waste hosting agreement in Canada. Get your puke bags uh, ready. The municipality of South Bruce, a nuclear waste management organization that has never managed anything. You got eight, 19 years with $26 billion. They haven't managed any nuclear waste so far. <laughs> How much interest is uh, on $26 billion a year? How much money are you going to make on $26 billion a year? <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? 
How come it's never grown? How come it's always been twenty-six billion dollars? It's been twenty-six billion dollars since uh, nineteen years ago. <laughs> since eighty-three or eighty-five, or I'm sorry, uh, ninety-five. For 26 billion underground facility to host a Canadian used nuclear fuel, and they're going to put it right about 1,500 acres of farmland. This is where they want to put it to, and they need 250 acres, which is a square kilometer, for the facility because they're going to bring the nuclear waste there, which means it's vented, and then they're going to repackage it when it gets there, and then it's surrounded by farm prime farmland too at that place. And so that's going to be just radiated everything for 170 years. So why not take it, you know, 500 miles into the Arctic Shield, into the deep granite? First off, you should never put it underground because it will melt down. Not maybe. At some point, and not that far in the future, it could be next year or 10 years later, it's going to melt down. You're talking about fuel rods, they're splitting atoms, it's going to melt down. At some point, she's going to melt down. If you put it down there and just walk away, it's going to melt down. And you can't seal it because it doesn't need oxygen to burn. And it burns at 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. And so at some point, you're, it's going to bring water into the cavity. And when that happens, water expands around 1,800 cubic foot per liter per millisecond. That's, a, that's going to cause a, an explosion, which is going to split the earth open. And now the vent, it's going to vent out of there be lethal doses within miles and miles and miles perpetually. And eventually, it'll consume all the steel, all the rocks, everything until it's open earth, and it'll be just 5.5 million bundles of nuclear meltdowns. 5.5 million bundles of fuel rods melting down to one time at some point in the future. If you put all this into one place, that's what's going to happen. Because once you melt down one section, the heat will cause the other sections to eventually um, denigrate. Now, you know, like the, the scumbag, so Bruce, uh, the Nuclear Waste Management Organization, has a couple of, quite a lot of scientists in their back pocket. They got $20 billion, $26 billion to play with the interest each year, right? Because it never grows, so they're spending the money somewhere. And uh, they got this, and we covered it quite a bit. They got these couple of scientists were saying that if you put a, a tenth of a, a millimeter, if you put 10 millimeters of copper on the cast, then it, it, it wouldn't break down for a million years. Again, this is ludicrous suggestion. Because the Wigner effect, the, the bombardment, the neutron bombardment, will break down no matter if you use titanium or you use whatever. It doesn't matter. If you use 10 foot thick steel, it's still going to break it down. Right, it, it it breaks it down to molecular level, at an atomic level, where it no longer holds its bond, it becomes brittle. And it's gonna break down. This is that is the problem with nuclear see? And this is why they haven't come up with a solution for eighty years, besides the fact that they want to vent it into the environment so they can exterminate all the species. Did nothing else would make any sense. Why are they doing it? There's still no hosting agreement or contract in place that will lay out the details how plans for a $26 billion underground facility to host Canada's used nuclear fuel would proceed in the community and how much the municipalities would be paid to host it. They said for 170 years, we worked the past 12 years to get to that stage, and they're going to have a referendum. And if the community says no, 10, they're going to spend another 12 years looking somewhere else when they say no, because they're going to do it in the community. They want farmland. Wherever the farmland is to, that's where they want. It's on purpose, right? They'll get you one way or the other. They'll poison everything at some point. And if you don't put it somewhere, it's hemorrhaging into the ecosystem anyway, splitting atoms into the ecosystem. Wherever the fuel is now, there's no containment, which is in Ontario, right? Except for Point Lepore, New Brunswick, of course, here in Canada. And it's a 170-year project. So basically $2.2 million a year for 170 years to poison everybody in your community. So Bruce will or won't be willing host to as many as 5.6 million used nuclear fuel bundles that remain active for centuries. 
So how many more used bundles are going to be created over the next 170 years? We created that much in 30 or 40 years. And here's the mayor. He'll sell your soul, your children's soul, and everybody else's soul for a big envelope stuff for cash, right? The only other community still in the running to host the underground facility will encompass nearly 1,500 below surface acres. It's between Drysden and Inglis in northern Ontario. And it's right in the community, right in prime farmland. So, Bruce, let me show it to you, actually. Why not? What's the rush anyway, right? There is no rush. Oh, and there she is, blows. So here's what they done a couple of years back. They went in and they bought 1,500 acres. In Teawater, Ontario. And the facility at the surface requires 250 acres, which is a uh, square kilometer. The remainder will be continued to be used as it is today for farmland. It's 250 acres of farmland, or 1,500 acres of farmland. These are maniacs, man. Every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms because the radiation is hemorrhaging out and you eat the food and get sick and die and they got shares in the pharmaceutical companies, right? Oh, we got all these grandiose pictures and graphs and everything. Everything is vented. Look, it doesn't even look like farmland up there, do it? Even though it is farmland. You know it's going to be farmland. That's all they ever do. And if you put everything deep into the earth and you leave it there, eventually it melts down. That's the problem with nuclear. Michelle Stein, who lives near the proposed Soap Bruce Deep Geological Repository Project, is co-founder of No Nuclear Waste Protect Our Waterways, bless her hearts, who lives close to the proposed project area just north of Tea Water, is worried about the impact on her and neighbors who might move if the Deep Geological Repository moves forward. Well, it's going to devalue their land too, right? But it's going to poison everybody that eats food from those farms for 170 years. Why don't they move it up into the Canadian Shield where there's the, the community doesn't exist? And it's right... You know, there's, there's 7,000 lakes around this place too, right? It's an incredible paradise up there, folks. That area, if you look it up on a map, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's stunning. And there's so many lakes there, you can't even wrap your minds around it. Why well, Canada needs nuclear-powered submarines in an even more dangerous world. Yeah, Canada's got four submarines. They're all at the West Edmonton Mall in Alberta, right? What's Canada going to do? I mean, Canada's not supposed to be a war country. We're supposed to be a peacekeeping country. How the hell did we end up needing war machines? What are you talking about? And Canada can't even take care of Canada, and we're going to have now to shell out for four nuclear reactors, just like Australia just done, where now the country has no future because you're going to spend all the money you got on nuclear reactors that you can't use and you don't need and you can't afford to maintain. Ah, yes. Well, Mitchell Lee Chin is investing in nuclear power. He's a billionaire advisor and entrepreneur, says the same principle that he used to build his wealth have dictated a focus for nuclear energy. And that's like when you get so, apparently when you get, not everybody, when you get wealthy enough, then evil is the only thing that you can articulate. He said, we're seeing clear singles out there at Constipated Party 28, conference of parties for those who don't know any better, 28 countries committed to the triple nuclear reactors. Like, what are you talking about? Last year, the nuclear industry had 1.7 gigawatts of backwards they lost, and wind and solar advanced 507 gigawatts. The total capacity of nuclear worldwide is only 364 gigawatts. So in 12 months, renewables was 507 gigawatts. There is no second wave. There is no, they don't even have license into the, into the nuclear regulatory agency for 
the small modular reactor design. So then you got to submit it. It takes four or five years for the application to go through five or 600 people to shift through it. And they find all these flaws. They submit it back to the company. The company resends it back to the engineers if they got the funding. And they go back and forth for 10, 15 years. And then here in Canada, they go to Chalk River, I guess, and build a a, prod, a uh, test model of their reactor design. They're going to have to run it hard for a couple of years, find out the issues and flaws, and then they're going to have to redesign it again and go back and build another one. You're talking 25 years, 30 years down the road at least. Chin will be dead long before he gets to that. Anyway, right? There is no second wave. One of the key technology technological developments behind this project is the onset of small modular reactors and very small modular reactors. They don't exist. They're a complete fiction. They don't have a license application into a regulatory agency anywhere on the entire planet. But anything a small modular reactor or a, t uh, a very small modular reactor, an idiot, geothermal can do 500 times better and quicker. And everything that the geothermal uses can be recycled. Nothing, the small modular reactor is going to produce 35 times more high level waste, and 30 times more intermediate level waste, and five times more fuel rods, which are high SA, high level mixed oxide fuel rods, plutonium mixed oxide fuel rods on top of that, five times more than a conventional reactor of the same capacities. It's the epitome of stupid to even suggest that small modular reactors have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. These reactors promise much faster turnaround times. No, they don't. What are you talking about? They don't even exist. And the only one that even tried it, which turned out to be a Ponzi scheme, from was New Scale. And they spent 18 years and didn't even build a product. But they, how many uh, tens of thousands of investors did they rob again? or hundreds of thousands, we don't know, but it's at least tens of thousands of investors, they should have never been on the stock market. It's unconscionable. And here we got a conglomerate, unlike renewables like wind and solar, he says, nuclear energy generates heat rather than just electricity. First off, there's 507 gigawatts last year, wind and solar. Nuclear went backwards, lost 1.7 gigawatts, two large nuclear reactors. There is no nuclear renaissance, and there certainly is no small modular reactor renaissance, period. There's nothing out there. There's, and in fact, they're so devoid, there's almost 100 different light, there's almost 100 different designs for small modular reactors that they're working on because there, there is no designs that work. Otherwise, they would have built it a long time ago. And when you got, you know, it's not even in its infancy, you got almost 100 designers, companies out there that are trying to design a small modular reactor, and they can't crack that code. That, t that tells you everything you need to know. It tells you, run away. Don't look at that. That's a, that's a Ponzi scheme. Every one of them is, in, in order to be funded, have to come out with a product product that they don't have. And they have to, 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 to word it in a way that people... In, Governments invest in it, but it actually doesn't even exist. It's just, it's just meant, and geothermal could replace every one of these companies. And they'd be up and running within two weeks. They'd go in and flatten out the site, build a geothermal, move on to the next spot. Nothing to it. It's stupid simple, too, to do geothermal. And you don't pollute the ecosystem for a billion years. Such dishonest. Like, they're such dishonest people. And he's a billionaire. He's an advisor and entrepreneur. So he knows the difference. He knows this is stupid. Uranium stocks poised for a breakout as nuclear resurgence gains momentum. There is no nuclear renaissance. There's no nuclear resurgence. Nuclear went backwards last year, 1.7 gigawatts. Renewables advanced 507 which is over 600 large reactors of renewable energies coming online in just 12 months. Nuclear can't compete with this. You're a disgusting parasitic industry. 
Speaking of parasites, Raphael Grossi. What a degenerate scumbag he turned out to be. What a revolting maggot. Para what a vo revolting... Let me explain that to you because... Raphael Grossi says that there is no meltdown in Fukushima. He's not the only one. Look at the media. He's pretending they're in the fuel pool of Reactor 4. Now, they've done it for both reactors. They've done it for Reactor 3 and Reactor 4, but Reactor 1 and 2 melted down too. Raphael Grossi said nothing got out of these buildings. Nothing. Nothing got out of the buildings. And like, at what point? At what point do we start being honest? At what point do we have a future? We can't have a future by not being honest. We can't have a future. Iran suspends all visit to I or IAEA degenerates suspends all visit to Iran's nuclear sites, and Israel is thinking about bombing Iran nuclear power plants. And they're not just thinking about it, they're planning it out. So today, tomorrow, or the next day, I'm suspecting they're going to bomb a nuclear power plant. Most likely today or tomorrow. And Ralph is, well, I don't think it's a good idea, but he doesn't articulate why it's not a good idea. And I gave you nothing but reasons all night long why it's, it's the worst case idea imaginable. They better not friggin' do it, I can tell you that much. Korea Institute looks into the modular reactors. Uh, well, that's right, there's 101 companies out there looking at small modular reactors. They all got their own designs, and none of them are going to come to fruition. Another useful idiot walked away from the nuclear industry. Top U.S. nuclear energy official steps down. She must have watched one of our presentations, I guess. I went, oh shit, I'm out of here. Without nuclear power, we're not reach uh, the zero emission goal. They never even put net zero there. What the hell? They're getting slack. Look at them. A complete useful idiot, right? Without nuclear energy, we have no chance of reaching the goal of net of zero emissions, not net zero. Like, what are you talking about without nuclear energy? Really, what are you talking about, man? You got geothermal. You got renewables. You don't even need uh, wind and solar if you got geothermal, and everybody can build, anybody can build geothermal. Every community has a has a contractor that can build a geothermal plant. You don't have to worry about poisoning the water for a billion years. You don't have to worry about poisoning. Everybody sixty years and older don't have to go and die if it breaks down. But they had an earthquake. In Japan, the stories are all over the place, by the way. This one says Nagasaki. When you read it, it's 228 kilometers east, east northeast of Nagasaki, for God's sakes. Uh, this one's 6.3 earthquake stripes off Japan, is up to 6.7. Still reeling from 7.6 on January the 1st, I'll say. We still don't got any news on the Shika plant in Ishikawa Prefecture. And why are they showing this picture here? This picture is from January the 1st. Ojima or whatever. This is a uh, Arara, uh, Ishikawa Prefecture. Look at her. Look how distorted the roads is. The roads was lifted. The earth was lifted 13 feet on a fault line that's been dormant for 3,000 years. All the poles are leading. So... The Aikata nuclear power plant is right there, but it's closed, but it's still got multiple fuel pools stuffed with reactor cores. And the earthquake was right here. So these two prefectures were intensity of six in Japan, seismic intensity scale is seven, which is like an 8.2 on the Richter scale. So you can see that those two prefectures were a 6, and Japan's Shindu scale is 7, which is an 8.2. And the Aikata nuclear power plant, which is stuffed with fuel rods, 
degenerate New York Times. And so that X is apparently where the earthquake was too. And Ishikawa, or the nuclear power plant is right here. So who knows if there's any damage at the fuel pool. But those prefectures, because the earthquake is right here, those prefectures are way over there. So they were six on Japan's seismic intensity scale of seven, which is an 8.2 on the Richter scale. The earthquake had to go past the nuclear power plant to make them a six at a Japan seven on the Shindu scale. So that nuclear plant would have shook pretty friggin' violently, period. Not maybe, but in order for those prefectures, the blue is a six is a six in Japan's seismic intensity scale. Or the red, rather, is the seismic intensity scale. And then that peninsula is a thin strip, right? Which is an 8.56, so it's an 8.6. It's an 8.57, which is an 8.6, right? On the Richter scale. And right, right away, this is the first hour or something, these headlines come out, minor damage reported. They were saying no damage, basically. But they, they don't tell you what the minor damage is. And Framatone signs a multi-billion contract for size, we'll see. But like, which is France's government. That's the government of France itself. Uh, and, and then the resources for Sizewell are just unbelievable that they need. Just Sizewell alone, they're going to use enough cement to build a sidewalk all the way to Rome, for goodness sakes. And again, right, it, the big fight, the government won't fund it. Britain won't fund it. They, they need the money for nuclear weapons and nuclear subs, right? And they need the nuclear plant to make uh, tritium to keep their bombs active. Um, I can't even pronounce his name. Red Apple Group taps a nuclear energy executive to lead a rollout of small nuclear reactors. There is no rollout. They don't have any applications into the, the, nu the United Nuclear Group doesn't have an application into a regulatory agency. They're not going to be rolling out anything. And then they're calling it green energy, because in Europe, you're allowed to call it green energy. But that doesn't mean it's green energy. New York billionaire. And so that's two billionaires today come out going to be promoting nuclear. First off, nuclear doesn't have a single person in the nuclear industry that the world relates to. Not one person. Right, and they roll out these billionaires, right? You know, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, uh, Red Apple Group. The whole story is just—it's pathetic. The whole industry is just one great big pathetic industry, and none of this is going to come to fruition. We know that. We've been at this forever, and uh, this is just false hype. They just want to hype up. The industry. He owns uh, all kinds of grocery changes. He owns uh, major radio stations, fossil fuel real estate businesses. And he also owns United Nuclear Group, which doesn't have a product. They don't have an application into the regulatory agency. Now, we t we've heard of them before, but we know they're a non-group. They're like new scale, right? They got money, but they ain't got no product. And money don't buy f nuclear small modular reactors because they don't exist. Future energy in the country not going to be windmills and solar cells, the self-made billionaire told the Post earlier this year. But that's what exactly what it is. There was 507 gigawatts of renewables last year in 12 months. Nuclear went backwards two large nuclear power plants went offline. Nothing replaced it. So which one is the better resource? It's renewables. And why, why would you look at small modular reactors when geothermal can do it 100 times better and quicker and longer without 
you don't have to store something. You don't have to find deep geological repositories. You don't have to, to poison everybody for a billion years. Uh, 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 um, well, like last night when my show was over, I never had a single view on my video. <laughs> I don't know what tonight. But that video done pretty good. That's probably the only good video I've done in in the last two years, and it never done very good. Unfortunately, I'm censored too much, right? Because there's nobody's ever come out and tried to educate the population. Because if you did, nuclear couldn't survive. And they're so anal that anybody that shows up must be a bad person. There's that's going to give me a hard time. Bear with me. This is stupid. I got 367 views on last night's show, but when the show was over, I never had no views. <coughs> it don't matter. Let's keep going here. Let's give it up, I suppose. That's the best we can do, isn't it? If you made it this far, don't be shy. Give us a thumbs up. Bear with me while I get the set up for a close. Let's close the pole down. Let's, we can do that much, can't we? I'm still a bit slow tonight. My apologies to everybody. Last night I, I wasn't feeling well. I was in bed 50 minutes after the show was over. Must the International Atomic Energy Agency be charged with omnicide, which is an extinction of all species? for concealing Fukushima four nuclear reactors and eight nuclear fuel pools and meltdowns. We got 100% of people says yes. Some, whoever voted no, that was an accident. They were sneezed or something and they went click no by accident. It absolutely couldn't have been on purpose. I'll turn that down a little bit for you. We'll get there. Bear with me. I smurfed up a little bit. Not unusual. It usually takes five people to work the equipment I got. I'm foolish. I, I do it all myself. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night and great day tomorrow. Truth and nuclear do not go together. <laughs> Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> they can't count the off-world views. I like that, James. Thank you. <laughs> I love stuff like that. Eh? I'm such a geek. And uh, I got a feeling tomorrow night's going to be a doozy show because Iran is not playing games anymore. Israel is, as far as I can tell, Israel is posturing, but they're stupid enough because they're arrogant to attack Iran's nuclear power plant and all hell could break loose. If they attack, if they attack a nuclear power plant, we're in real trouble, folks. We're in a hell of a lot of trouble. Yeah, and I changed my diet now, probably a month, I think, now to vegetable. Well, not, not totally, but I'm pretty close to it. I'm getting there. And uh, one of my favorite meals now is like three or four peppers and you chop up little chunks and three, uh, three different, say three different types of onions and celery, chop, chop, dice them up and, and then um, lettuce and cucumbers and stuff like that. And then get the pita bread, uh, you know, the, the good stuff, right? Like the taco type bread and... Uh, Make a sandwich of them, my God, they're so good. My goodness. 
So you don't, and you won't crave like sweets. You won't crave ice cream. You're not going to crave chocolates. You're not going to crave all the other stuff that you normally. And, and it's hard to believe what I'm saying. I know, right? But once you do it, you'll realize I'm true. What I'm saying is true. And you just feel better. You're not bloated. You're never bloated anymore, right? You don't feel lazy. You just feel good, right? And uh, you feel like sweeping the floor or doing laundry or working. And it's been a blown gales down here nonstop. Tomorrow, I'm supposed to get up to around 78 kilometers an hour, for goodness sakes. And then uh, for the next week, it's going to be blowing pretty heavy. I'm heartbroken, but... It's still... We're the last ones to see summer. We're on the east coast of Canada. We're the last to see summer out here, I can tell you that much. But we're getting prepared for it anyway. We're doing the best we can. I don't know if rubbing hydrogen peroxide on your kidney will cure your kidney problems, but I know I know it will help it. I don't know if it will cure it. But uh, there is oncologists, when cancer patients come to them, they'll give them a big bottle, like a one-gallon bottle of hydrogen peroxide, and they'll tell them to wash their body with it twice a day. And uh, that's how they're treating cancers. Because hydrogen peroxide, like I have it here with me right now, and I'll spray it on. I'll spray it on my juggler veins. If I got the flu or sniffles or anything like that, I instantly get rid of it by spraying it on my juggler vein, and then my juggler vein, will, the blood will carry right through my whole body right away. But you, you can wash your whole. Take a cup of it, and take like a face cloth or paper towels. I think is better. And because it's smaller, it right? doesn't soak up as much each time. And just wash yourself down, let it dry into your body, and you'll immediately feel this oxygen in your body. And another good one to be using is the chlorine dioxide, which is the, you can get the droplets on Amazon. And um, you basically mix five drops of each one with, uh, say, 400 milliliters of water. You wait for five minutes. One is um, an activator. It's just an enzyme. You already got it in your stomach anyway. But you can mix it for like in your water bottle so you can sip away at it in the day. And that's just, that kills parasites, right? And um, your body's mostly water. And so you can take really parasitic water that you can't possibly drink and put this stuff in it. And five minutes later, now you can add water to it and then drink it. And about $35 Canadian uh, for the double bottles. And, uh, and it's just the same stuff you use for purifying. It's chlorine dioxide, the same stuff you use for pure. It's really good. And uh, men, uh, it's, uh, there's... Look up the documentary, The Universal Antidote. That's the documentary. And that's all you're going to find underneath it is a PDF file with hyperlinks to everything in the documentary. And it's, it was created by a nurse We've seen a lot of snake oil salesmen over their time, right? But this one confused them because it works. And so they went out and investigated for many years, made a documentary. It's free. It's up on a site specifically. And that's all you're going to find is the documentary. And the PDF file below is hyperlinked to everything in the documentary. And it's called The Universal Antidote. So think about that statement, The Universal Antidote. And that's hydrogen peroxide. And um, it's a two-part, and you just mix it together to sterilize water if you're in hiking or something like that. But it kills the parasites. When you put it in your body, it kills the parasites, right? And cancer is like a parasite. So, so are many other illnesses, and so it's not going to hurt you. Let's put it that way. And if you go watch the documentary, you can make up your own mind. I'm not recommending anything. I'm just saying I am recommending you go watch that documentary, and I am recommending that spraying hydrogen peroxide or chlorine dioxide was the documentary, I'm sorry. The, the, the peroxide is just oxygen. So you, and oxygen is really good at killing germs and, and viruses in your body. And so the best way to distribute it through your body is at major uh, blood points. Like, so wherever you got major vessels exposed, like your juggler veins, it's perfect. And it gets rid of any sniffles right away. It's gone. Forget about it. It might, you know, you know like if, you got really, if you're really stuffed up and now you're trying it, you still got to get rid of your mucus, right? 
But if you're doing maintenance all the time, you're not going to get that stage, see? Anyway, uh, I almost made it to two hours. <laughs> I guess I should start that song again, should I? Because we screwed that up. <laughs> okay, I'll give it up. I'll, I'll quit. I'm sorry. Here, let me see what we got. Good night, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. And we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Friday night is the last show of the week because we start on Sunday. And um, we're worried sick about Israel being an idiot. Considering what they just done to Gaza, we have every right to be worried. That's a complete genocide what they got done to Gaza. It's not unprecedented, too. It's heartless, eh? They starved them. No fuel, no water, no food now for how many months? My goodness, since October the 7th. And it looks like they staged the war themselves anyway. They allowed it to happen. Is the worst case scenario, or the best case scenario. Yeah, D DCA, in the studies that DCA, uh, it reduced all heart tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. So if you've got a big tumor that's pressing on your organs, for instance, rather than get invasive surgery because, you know, it's pressing against your organ or, or, or whatever, and that, that calls for invasive surgery, right? Well, the DCA is shown to reduce all tumors, of every, even the hard tumors, old tumors, hard tumors, by 70% in the first three weeks. And um, there's a lot of propaganda out there because all it does is restores your weight, your blood cells. It restores your, it separates, it separates your blood basically. It allows your blood to operate like it normally would. Because the cancer is where your blood cells are all plated up together. And DCA unplates your blood. And so cancer can't live in that environment. Cancer can't live in an acidic, a proper acidic, right, environment. And um, I should look up that for you guys too, for the next show maybe. In the United States, you can get it at any pharmacy. Any pharmacy with a compound chemist can make it. But typically, most pharmacies got it. If you don't get it at one, try another one. And if you're in America, you can get it on Amazon.com. And if you don't have it for sale, you'll see it, and you can contact the company, and they'll ship it to you, even in Canada. And they banned it in Canada about six years ago. And that was discovered, in, the cure was discovered in Canada, in Red Deer, Alberta, where it reduced all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. And so if you're doing it early, it's extremely promising. But if you put all three of them together, you're not going to hurt yourself, I can tell you that much. But I, I, can't, um, I can't tell you something is a cure online because it's illegal anyway, right? But I can tell you that uh, if you go watch the documentary, The Universal Antidote, Chlorine Dioxide, if you wash your body every day with hydrogen peroxide, it's like the big bottles are only a couple of dollars, four or five dollars for a big bottle. Um, and the DCA, you know, I, I got personal stories I can talk about with the DCA, but I'm not going to. Uh, where, where people were taking it, but they were late stage cancer. And uh, they also took chemotherapy and radiation therapy rather and they died eventually but when they died they had perfect blood and they, they wouldn't have died if they had to gave if they had to stop taking the radiation therapy but people you know it's pretty scary stuff you're dying of cancer and i get that right and i i know a few examples of it that we we gave people the dca went and bought it and gave it to them and they wouldn't stop taking the radiation therapy but the doctors were completely confused because their blood was perfect. Did, did we get to two hours yet? I'm stalling now. It's okay to stall when you're talking about such a great subject, right? Oh, well, the song played twice. I can't do it to you again. <laughs> I'll do the short version. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. 
You can get back here tomorrow night. I got some good stuff for you. Have a great night. Hugs for everybody. I love every one of you folks. Now, don't forget that, okay? You're very important people. Very proud to have every one of you here. You take care, and we love all of you. God bless.